If you want to know how much it costs to become a helicopter pilot, then in this video, I'm going to go into detail about how many hours and how much it's going to cost you so that you can fly helicopters like these with your friends and family. Everyone, welcome back to another episode. As y'all have seen over the past couple years, I was able to acquire my pilot's license. And I wanna share with you how much it costs so that if you're considering about doing the same, you know what to budget for. And let me tell you, it's gonna be a lot more achievable than you think. About three years ago, I began the journey of getting my helicopter license. And I didn't really know how much it was gonna cost. Helicopters are approximately two, three, four times more expensive to get a license in than an airplane. And that is because the operating costs of them are so high. So if you're considering becoming a pilot, you're gonna to wanna to listen to how much I spent so that you know what to expect. So the first step I took in becoming a pilot was essentially Googling a local flight school. I literally got on Google and I searched helicopter schools near me. I ended up at a place at a local airport, which ended up being a blessing because it was in a class Charlie airspace, which means it has a tower. It was a great airport to learn at. That way I became comfortable with talking to the tower and air traffic controllers very early on in my training. So if you have an opportunity to do so, don't be afraid, definitely go for that. So after contacting the flight school, I got set up with a discovery flight. The discovery flight entails going out with an instructor, learning the basic mechanics of the helicopter, and then actually going out and flying. About an hour or so, just to kind of get comfortable, see if you like it, do some basic maneuvers like a takeoff and a land. And, you know, they give you some of the controls depending on your skill level. And, you know, they might even let you try and hover or, you know, whatever. So, that was the first step, is getting that discovery flight over with. What I ended up doing was scheduling about one to two flights a week. This fit with my schedule really well. I was able to go up after work or even on the weekends to fly and start logging those hours because we're gonna get into those hours and how much it costs per hour in order to do that. When I started flying, it was approximately $500 an hour to fly a Robinson R44. Now I started out in a Robinson R22, which is about 100 to $200 cheaper to fly per hour, but I found more comfort in the Robinson, especially in Florida, since we like to have air conditioning. It gets hot, especially during the summer with the humidity, the air conditioning really takes the edge off when you're already sweating bullets because you're taking in so much information. So after your first couple lessons, your instructor sees that you're committed to the program, they're gonna have you get your medical. My medical that I received is a class three, and that restricts me to only doing private flying. If I wanted to explore the commercial world, I would have to get a second or first class medical in order to do so, but just to get your private pilot's license, a third class is sufficient. After you get your medical, you can then apply for your student pilot's license, which will then be issued by the FAA. Your instructor will help you do this, and then you'll continue flying. After about 10 to 20 hours, your instructor will start to brief you on your solo, okay? And a solo includes actually flying by yourself. And there are requirements within the 40 hours that is required before taking a check ride that you have to complete at least 10 solo hours before this check ride with an examiner. There are several more requirements, which include three hours of cross country time. A cross country flight includes a flight from an A to B destination that is greater than 50 miles. It also includes three hours of nighttime flying as well so that you're familiar with flying at night because things look different taking off landing hovering it's all different at night just because of your depth perception and the way that you see lights and other aircrafts of the 40 hours 20 of which has to be with an instructor you are required to do ground school with them as well so when you add up these numbers you end up having approximately 40 hours of flight time before this check ride at around 500 to $550 an hour in the R44. So you're looking at 20 to $25,000 for completing just your flight hours. This does not include having to complete an online ground school and taking a written exam, all of which must be completed before applying to take your check ride with a DPE examiner by the FAA. Realistically, most students do not take their check ride at the 40 hour mark. I, for instance, went about 52 to 55 hours of total instructed time and solo time as a student pilot 
before I took my check ride. And that allowed me to be properly prepared so that I was able to pass it the first time. For a grand total for all the hours I spent flying helicopter, going through ground school, taking exams, taking the check ride, fuel, miscellaneous costs, I ended up spending about $34,000 in order to get my helicopter pilot's license. Now that is a chunk, that is a lot of money. It is significantly more than getting your airplane single engine land pilot's license first. Now keep in mind that I spread that training out over the course of about two years. So I spent about 16 to $17,000 per year over the course of two years before taking my check ride and completing my private helicopter license. After finishing my helicopter pilot's license, I quickly transitioned to airplanes and I acquired my airplane license shortly thereafter. Since I already held a private helicopter license, I then was able to add on a airplane single engine land license. And that required an additional 30 hours of flight time in an airplane. 20 of which had to be with an instructor and 10 hours of which had to be solo. Again, with the three hours of cross country time, three hours of night flying, and three hours of instrument or stimulated instrument time. The requirements are very similar. You still are required to do more hours in an airplane and solo hours as well, but the cost was significantly less. It cost about 180 to $200 per hour in order to do so. So in order to do my airplane single engine land add on to my private helicopter license, it costs about an additional six, $7,000. Another major difference of doing an add on is you do not have to take an additional written exam since you already completed the written exam acquiring your private license. So whether you're doing helicopter first or airplane first, once you get that written out of the way, you do not have to take it another written for private certificate. But again, in order to get the airplane single engine land ticket, you have to do another check ride with a DPE. And so after completion of that check ride with the DPE, shout out to my boy Toby in Venice, I became an airplane pilot and a helicopter pilot, all within about six months of each other. If these numbers sound outrageous to you, it's because it's expensive to fly. There's nothing cheap about aviation, but I highly recommend at least go out and take a discovery flight or slowly start chipping away at your hours because it's extremely rewarding. I reached a point in my career in my life where I was kind of plateaued and cruising and I needed more. And so once that world opened up to me, it was a whole nother level to learn about. It was amazing to learn about all different aspects of weather, airspaces, navigation, operating the vehicles. And so if you are looking for more in your life, I highly recommend you explore aviation. As you guys know, I like to improve my life 1% better a day. So this is what I'm doing to make my office and my life 1% better today. We have some new quartz countertops going into the hygiene room. Got a sink. We got a faucet going in. We're making a hole for the trash and then another hole for some wiring that'll come up through the countertop. So leave me a note in the comments how you improved your life 1% better today. Make sure you guys subscribe, like, leave me a comment, and we'll see you tomorrow. Have you ever found yourself in a situation where you've been wrenching on your car, need a 10 millimeter wrench, plowing a bag of flaming hot Cheetos and drinking a Dr. Pepper and realize, dang it, I really need to brush my teeth? Well, now's your chance. I'm talking Dr. Parker 10 millimeter tool brush, a toothbrush on one end, a 10 millimeter wrench on the other. This sucker, CNC billet aluminum, baby. Lifetime warranty. Get them now at CletusMcFarland.com.